Hey guys, it's me again with more Japanese studying, but this one's more specific because it can't really, I don't know how it can apply to anything anyone's learning, although it may apply to somebody maybe in other subjects, but for me specifically, this is um, mainly what I've been doing to memorize my kanji because I have kanji flashcards and I have been able to up until this point pretty much all the kanji I can tell what the meaning is when if you just show me the kanji I can tell you what it means the only problem I'm running into is memorizing all of the readings and knowing like how to say which one by itself and which one to say when it's combined with another kanji so because of this problem that I was running into I was trying to figure out how to drill it into my brain so that I wouldn't forget when I get nervous on the test and under pressure I wanted to just have it as second nature so what I did is I started making these little charts and uh, at first I was just writing it repetitively over and over again and saying it because a key thing when you're studying is like not only reading it so I'm a visual learner but I'm also kinesthetic so if I read it over and over again and write it over and over again like my body is doing something so it's helping drill it into my memory but on top of it I heard that you have like I think it's like a 20% more chance of memorizing something if you also say it while you're reading it like if you say it out loud because then you're hearing it so you're saying it you're hearing it you're writing it you're reading it when you do all of that it helps you memorize it way much better it'll stick longer and you retain the information better remember this symbol for book which is right here hon by itself it's hon but when combined with other kanjis it can also be pronounced moto so because it's got two i put the top one like the main reading when it's by itself um the main reading when it's by itself i decided i needed to prioritize that so i put it at the top and then um, any secondary readings I put below here in this circle so it's right smack dab in the middle so that way I'm forced to look at it while I'm writing so not only is it going to help me memorize how to say it by pronouncing it in hiragana but also I'm going to be reading the hiragana version of the kanji I just started writing hon so I just started I made sure I practiced the right stroke order and so then I just kept going over and over, so I was just like, hon, hon, hon. And then every once in a while I'll be like, moto, hon, moto, hon, hon, moto. And I just kept going over and over again, and basically I did that for all the kanji I was doing. So like, jin, um, this, Actually, I messed up on. I should have put hito at the top because the main way that you would read this kanji when it's by itself is hito. And then jin and nin are the secondary readings. Usually when this is combined with another kanji, that's how it would be pronounced in the, in the word or phrase. And so literally, I just did that hito, 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 jin, nin, hito, hito. And I just kept going. Same thing for this one, tsuki. But also when you use it with other things like a month, um, usually when you're talking about dates, you know, getsu, gatsu, um, suki means moon. I already know what these mean, like this is for person, this is moon, this is fire. I know what they mean, but for me I was forgetting how to pronounce it and how, like, how to pronounce the readings. So this was my like thing, so I got to do, combine all my ways of learning. I got to combine my audio and visual learning. I also got to combine my kinesthetic learning. And um, also I got to use my creativity because if you notice, these look like Japanese flags. You have the red dot, which is the sun. And then here you go, like all the Japanese flags. I just thought that was a really cool thing because I didn't plan that out. It just kind of like, I just wanted to circle what was in the middle and just make boxes so that I can fit more on one page. And then I realized after I had made the first one, hey, it looks like a Japanese flag. <laughs> so I was like, this is pretty cool. But then I realized 
hey, I can make a video because this could actually, this could actually help somebody. Like, I just kept making them over and over again for every, for every kanji I was studying, I would get to practice the stroke order and the pronunciation. But I figured this could help somebody else who's trying to study kanji and who's running into the same issue as me. Another thing I thought of is that if you know the kanji and you know how to pronounce it, but you're having trouble remembering the meaning, you could do it this way. You could put the meaning in the middle, like day or sun. Like, you could put the meaning in the middle and circle that, and then you can just pronounce it that way. So I could say, uh, Michi. 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 Like, I could, I could do it that way. And you can put the meaning in here. So if you were having trouble remembering, what does this mean? You could do it that way. Um, you could also do it this way if you wanted to memorize it in hiragana, you could put the actual kanji in the middle of the circle, and then you can, um, but yeah, I figured you could do that, and you can just write all the different ways that, you know, you would pronounce it, and you could just write it around, um, but yeah, I don't have much time on my camera, and I know I talked a lot already, but I just hope that this was explained well enough to where somebody could actually use this. If not, I mean, whatever. <laughs> Even if it helps one person, I think it's worth posting because it helped me. So, I don't know, I'm not the only person who's trying to memorize kanji and needs something other than flashcards. So yeah, I mean, I have four chapters worth. I think it, I think I have 60 kanji. I need to figure out. Yeah, 58. Yeah, I have about 60 kanjis to memorize. And I pretty much have all the meanings in my head. It's just the matter of the readings. And so that's why I just came up with this thing. And, uh, oh yeah, the other thing I was going to suggest is that if somebody is studying something else or another language, say you're studying Chinese or Arabic or Russian, like if you're trying to memorize the Russian alphabet or something, you could literally put whatever you're gonna put inside of this symbol um even if you're like trying to do like even if you were doing like hebrew or something i don't know just you can put the symbol inside of a circle or you can put the symbol um you can put the symbol inside of a cloud and then put a bigger cloud around it and you can put that triangle inside of a square or you could have whatever your subject is inside of the triangle and then you can be as creative as possible but I just did a circle because it was just simple I was just trying to get the point across and then it ended up looking like a Japanese flag so I was like oh, okay flag of Japan that's pretty cool so yeah I'm done talking hopefully this video helps somebody